All right, I'm so glad to see every one of you here today in the house of God. Let's give the Lord just a thanksgiving praise. Like, thank you, Lord. You know, we give applause. We give applause to movie stars. We give applause for athletes. And, and when they come on the field, our football team, the whole crowd is yelling. And could it be that sometimes our applause that we're giving to those is greater than our appreciation, our applause to the one that saved us, that loves us, that gives us eternal life. One more time, let's give God a real praise. Say, thank you, Lord. You've been good to me. You saved me. You loved me. If you're here for the first time, I'm so glad that you're here. And we could get so busy with life that we could lose the meaning of life. I'll say it again. We could get so busy with life that we could lose the meaning of life. And the meaning of life can be redefined by society, by, by, by your problems. And you start thinking, well, the meaning of life is to be at the top of the ladder, the food chain, and just get to the next promotion. The meaning of life is to get as much money as I can. The meaning of life is a weekend. That this weekend, I'm going to have a good old time, and I'm going to get high and I'm going to get drunk and it's all about the cakes, it's about the weed, it's about the the meaning of life is all about being macho man, like I'm a man I'll beat up anybody who looks at me wrong right? and you start, it, it, it's not that the meaning of life when it's all said and done and, and, and you'll never find contentment you'll never find peace you'll never find purpose until you find the meaning the meaning of life is to establish a relationship with God you're looking for something to make you whole the next girl is not going to do it the next guy is not going to do it come on the next porn site is not going to do it Las Vegas can't do it only Jesus can do that and I, maybe today I'm searching for meaning and I just want you to stay focused today say with me stay focused we're not just here to hear something and maybe you just came because someone dragged you in even if someone dragged you in why waste this time why don't, why don't you just open up your heart? And have you ever heard someone say, are you open-minded? Don't be closed-minded to this message. I'm not, we're not going to say anything that doesn't make sense. Everything we're going to talk about is truth, and it will help you if you listen to it and you apply it. And this is what's going to happen. If God can change your life, if you'll allow change in your life, then God can use you to bring about change in somebody else's life. And just, all I'm saying is, don't be hard-headed. Come in the atmosphere ready to learn. Um, be teachable. Be, be in a place that I just want to learn. By the time we're done, you should be able to talk while you're going in your car. What did you pick up? What did you learn? And if you just pick up one thing, you grew. You learned just one thing, you grew. And maybe it's just this, like, I need to be more teachable. I need to be more intentional. I need to be more focused. I need to stop wasting time. If I come into an atmosphere, let me get as much as I can out of that atmosphere. And today I am here and I'm here to learn. Anybody here to learn something? So let's, let's go ahead and pray and we'll go from there. Father, as we get ready to study the Bible, which is your word, I thank you, Lord, that we'll learn that today will be a day of life transformation for us. A day, Father, freedom for those that feel like I'm addicted or I'm bound and I'm angry and upset. But Father, you're the one that can heal us, set us free, heal our broken hearts. You're the answer. You said in your word that anybody who calls on you will be saved. That means they'll be made whole, they'll be set free, they'll receive eternal life. They'll get a new start, a new beginning. I pray that everyone is here, they'll get, they get a message that you love them so, so much. And the plan that you have for their lives is what they've really been looking for. I thank you. Use, use me today to speak your words. That it will not be my words, it will be your words. We're here to learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. We are, before I get into the teaching, we are doing a lot of great things. You may be seated. And, and one of the things that we're going to be doing at the end of, I mean, at the one, at 1.30, say 1.30. We are, we are launching our membership class. And... And this is the idea, is that you'll only get results as committed as you are. 
And some of us need to make a, just a commitment and make it official. You might be saying, yeah, this is my church home. Make that official at 1.30. We're going to have a we're going to have lunch for you that's catered. You'll have lunch. So I need to go eat. Just stay right here at 1.30. We'll have lunch for you. We're, 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 we're buying the lunch, and you're gonna, you'll be able to enjoy some lunch. But also, by the time you're done, you'll become an official member of the way. You're going to learn what our vision is, what our mission is. You're going to learn our, our value systems, what our values are, and also your responsibility as a member of the way we're outreach. I really believe this, that every single person should have a church home. How many believe that? Like the, I got a home. I, this is my church home. I, I, don't, I believe some people are, are homeless, not because they're not, not, not homeless on the streets, but homeless, they don't have a church, right? So we need to come against all church homelessness, that you have a church home. This will be your church home. This is a place that you're committed to. This is a place, this is a place that you're committed to loving your brothers and sisters. And this is a place you're committed to grow in. So that's going to be at 1.30. You do not want to miss it. At the end also, you're going to get an official membership card. And if you get pulled over by the police, just show them that. They will let you go. I'm just kidding. I'm a member of the way. Why are you pulling me over? I don't think so. Right. But we'll give you a membership card also. But you don't want to miss that. That's going to be the next level of your commitment or involvement in your church. And that's today at 1.30. I'd love for you to come. It'll be in our cafe. It'll be the first meeting, the official meeting we've had in our cafe. The second thing, um, this Tuesday and next Sunday, we are launching out Holy Warriors. That's the next level. I want to grow. Someone say, I want to grow. You only grow, you only grow if you're committed to grow. And if you're going to commit it to grow, if you're, going to, if you're committed to grow, you'll show. I, I'm rapping right now. If you're committed to grow, you'll show. Now, you could be saying, man, I got this problem. I got that problem. Could it be that you're dealing with your symptoms and you're not dealing with your spiritual development? A lot of the problems that we're having is we're just not spiritually developed. Could, we, could it be that we want, we want great results, but we want minif, minimum investment? If you want to get great results, you're going to have to invest. Someone say invest. So I guarantee you, holy warriors, this is what it will do for you. You'll get 10 years worth of growth in just 30 days. Commit to 30 days, commit 30 days, Tuesdays or Sundays, and your life will never be the same again. Go to the next level. Say it with me. Go to the next level. And the third thing that we're doing on March 12th, say it with me, March 12th, we as an army are going into our downtown, downtown area, and this is a place that a lot of gang banging is happening. This is a place where there's major poverty. This is a place where there's a lot of suicide and shootings and drug dealing in the hood. And we are going there on, on, on Lincoln Elementary on March 12th, and we're going to love our community. We are investing over $60,000. We're going to be giving gifts TVs, little bikes for little kids. We're going to have teams coming in there and doing nails for their ladies and makeovers. We're going to be giving out food and it's going to be an amazing day that we're going to love our community. All I'm saying is participate and I guarantee you this, you'll be blessed for being there loving some people, loving some people. I got this. If they don't know you love them, they could care, about, care less about your message. We're going to love them right where they're at and let them know they're very important to us but they're really important to God. God has not forgotten about them. So we're going to show some love. So this weekend, Adopt the Block, and all week long, we're hitting the streets. Already, we, I think we have thousands of people that are committed to come. Let's make sure we show up to our own party that we're actually putting on. I'd love for you to see you out there. So, so that's going to be March 12th. We're going to get there at 9 o'clock. And then we have a rally. Say rally. Um, now, is it this Friday? Yeah, this Friday at 7 o'clock right here in this building, we're going to have a rally for... Well, not, is it this Saturday? The next Friday. I'm sorry, I'm messing you up already. You'll be showing up like, you're showing up a week early. No, this is going to be the next Friday. March 11th, we're going to meet here and we're going to have a rally. And then the next day, we're going to hit the streets and have this big, big event. Okay? Awesome. Are you guys ready to learn from the Word of God today? I, you know, I, I recommend as you're studying the Word, um, always do your best to become a note taker. Because you always learn more when you hear and you write. Or go on your phone and, and just write down, you know, uh, this, uh, there's some images that come up on the screen. You could just go ahead and take a picture of them. And then review them afterwards because you'll get way more out of the content. So this week, we started a series and it's called Fight to Get in Position for the Mission. 
And every single one of us have a predetermined mission by God. And when you fulfill this mission, you're going to find your satisfaction. You're going to find your fulfillment. You're going to find the place that you belong. You are not, you are not an accident. Your mama might have told you, you're an accident. We, didn't, we weren't expecting you. But God already knew that you'd be on this earth at this time to make an impact for eternity. And when you understand what the mission is as a church or as an individual, you're going to find fulfillment. You're going to find progress. You're going to find success. And you're going to start winning in life when you get involved with the mission. Now, there's a lot of distracted, distractions to mission. Like you could have a problem and you can make your problem your excuse. The reason I can't get involved is because I got a problem right now. There's a time in your life that you got to ignore your problem and just get back on mission. And what I've learned is just get involved in mission, on the mission of God for your life. And it's funny how God handles your problems. Or maybe you're saying, I'm, my, man, I'm just too busy. My schedule's too busy. Don't ever get so busy that you're too busy for your purpose. You got to make time for what you value. So you have to be intentional about mission. Now, Jesus, when he came to earth, he said this, the son of man came with Jesus to seek and save those who are lost. So he was looking for people that were hurting. He was looking for people that ruined their lives by the decision that they were making. But he had a clear mission statement. I'm not here for me. I'm here for lost and broken people. He came to save people. Now, before Jesus resurrects from the, after Jesus resurrects from the dead, he has a private meeting with his disciples. Say it with me, his disciples. These were, this was his inner circle. These were people that made a decision. When he said, follow me, they actually made a decision to leave their old life behind and follow Jesus. They left the drugs behind. They left the alcohol behind. They left the lifestyle. They left, they left, they left, they left the anger behind. They left the gang banging behind. They left the pride behind. They left it all behind to follow Jesus. And they not only followed Jesus as followers, they followed him as disciples or mentees. What he was saying, follow me so I'll show you how to be like me. And when you become more like Christ, not more like your grandma, not more like your grandpa, not more like your father, become more like Christ. The reason I just said that, because it's crazy how our family can pass on their DNA to our lives. Have you ever said in your life, I'll never be like my dad, and you end up being just like your dad? Your dad was involved in this and you're involved in it. Your dad used to say this and you find yourself saying it and you become the thing that you hated the most. Because... Those attributes are passed on to you. But Jesus is saying, you don't have to be like that. You can be like me. You can be peaceful like me. You can be loving like me. You can be powerful like me. You can be a world changer like me. You can be like me. Isn't it good that there's an alternative? We can be like Christ. And that's the goal. So now Jesus meets up with his disciples. I've trained you for three years. And now he's ready to ascend to the Father. That means Jesus was here for 33 years on earth. Three years he committed to training and showing his disciples how to live, how to talk, how to affect people's lives, how to minister and serve others. And then he's ready to go to heaven, to the Father, and he says this, before, you go, before I go, I want to make clear up the mission. Say with me, clear up the mission. So in Matthew 28, 19, he says this. Just imagine a private meeting with 11 of his closest disciples, and he's having this conversation. And he says, go. Therefore, and make disciples of all nations. What I want you to do is go out there with this mission. Make disciples. Help the people to learn of me. There's a process. Help people learn about me. Learn about my word. This is what I do know. You can't teach something you haven't learned. What a shame for us to be in church our whole lives and not know nothing about the Bible. How can we teach others what we're not learning? And you might be saying, man, I got a learning disability. No, you don't. Stop using that as an excuse because you learn how to roll a joint. Some of you guys became chemists. You knew how to make stuff. You learn how to walk. You learn how to find that porn site. You learn how to gamble. Some of you guys learn how to hotwire cars. 
And all of a sudden, when it comes to growth in life, I don't know how. Don't let, come on, don't let what somebody said over you become a learning disability. Because I'm going to give you this. When you become a believer, you get the Holy Spirit. I mean, you get the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit doesn't have ADD. He's a great teacher. Say it with me, I can learn. But don't learn to learn or learn to teach. Don't just learn to learn. Learn to what? Learn. Because help people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. There should be a process. You should be learning. You should be applying. And then you should be teaching. And the result of learning, applying, and teaching is that you're going to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And how do you know you made a disciple of Jesus Christ? You now find yourself baptizing people. You know, today I have my friend Brett here. He's in the front. And his wife, Heather, right? Is that correct? Heather. And, and Brett, I met, I met at a design center, modern home design in Palm Springs. And, and he helped me get some tile. And, and, and he's, I think, the manager or part owner of that place. And, and we're, we're, we're talking and... And through one of his associates came over to my house and did some measurements. I talked to one of his associates about what we do as a church. And after we were done, I think that associate told him about what we do. And, and they began talking and we began to build a relationship. But, but I understand this. It's not just building a relationship. I care about Brett. I love Brett. And I want Brett to know Jesus Christ and I want him to have eternal life. So we just had a conversation this, this Friday, and I just knew that that was his day, that he was going to be born again. That was the day, February 25th, 2022, was going to be the day that Brett would surrender his life to Jesus Christ. So we had probably an hour conversation in the middle of the showroom floor while, while people are coming, his customers are coming and going, his staff is looking at him. He doesn't care. He said, just tell me more. Tell me more. I want to know about, I want to make sure I'm saved. I want to make sure I'm right with God. So by the time we were done, he gave his life to Jesus right there in the showroom floor. The Holy God Spirit touched him. And then after we were done, Brett tells me, I guess today is my day. I've been born again, right? Because I talked to him about born again. This is my second birthday. I go, yes, it is, Brett. I go, the next step is to get baptized. And you know what Brett told me? He goes, when can we do this? I go, this Sunday. He goes, I'm there. So he, wake up, he woke up. At, come on, he woke up probably at five something in the morning. He got his wife Heather and his baby here, seven year old daughter, and he came today to get baptized. He got saved Friday. He's getting baptized on Sunday because we have a mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Come on, give God some praise. This is what we're called to do. I am not asking you to do something that I don't do. And I knew it had a responsibility. If, I, if Brett gives his life to the Lord, I got a responsibility to him and his family to sacrifice, to do whatever I can to make sure that he spiritually grows and becomes like Jesus Christ. I, t I asked for a commitment to be baptized. He said yes. He's going to spend the next four weeks here in this church. He's going to drive all the way from Palm Desert. He's going to come and he's going to join Holy Warriors. Come on. His wife's going to join Holy Warriors. Their lives are going to be transformed because someone, come on, someone has accepted the mission to make Jesus Christ. They might make disciples of Jesus Christ. We are not here to play church. We are here on a mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Somebody out there needs a break. Someone out there needs peace. Someone out there needs freedom. Someone out there needs eternal life. But who's going to do it we are baptizing them teaching them so what's the answer our mission is to make disciples our church mission statement maybe you've never heard our church mission statement you'll learn this in membership but this is our mission statement it's making disciples of Jesus Christ that make disciples of Jesus Christ Say with me, making disciples of Jesus Christ that make disciples of Jesus Christ. We're not making disciples that don't make disciples because if we don't make disciples, this church is dead and dying. 
We've lost the mission of God in our churches. And the reason I'm saying that churches are closing all over America. We're losing the next generation. And this is, and, and we got Christian parents saying silly stuff. Well, I'm just going to let them, I'm going to, I'm going to just go ahead and, and let them choose whatever they want to choose. No, you teach them, lead them. Of course, they're going to make a decision, but you show them the right way. How, how many understand? I got a responsibility. No to that. Yes to this. So um, yesterday, Saturday, I went to a church building and this church building just not so long ago in 2000 something this church was a thriving church they had thousands of people coming to the church I landed on that property in Pomona yesterday and what I found was an abandoned building no one's in the church the church has been shut down for two years. This church building, there's weeds all over the place. Windows are broken. Floods in the building because the homeless have come in and stolen the copper. While we were there, electrical lines were live on the ground, ready to burn down the building. And we smelt it. We called, we called the fire department. They came out. That building probably would be burned down today because there was a fire last night in the building right next door because of this live wire. This building used to be the center of attraction in a city. But now it's an abandoned building with no one attending. And you might be asking, how did that church decline? How did that church die? That church declined and that church is shut down today. And before you know it, if, they, if it doesn't reopen, that church will deteriorate to the point that it will be declared, it will be a, a, declared unfit for use and there'll be bulldozers on that site pretty soon tearing that building down and it will be in history and something else will be built in its place because it was a church that lost their mission, they lost their why, they lost their focus. You'll never ever be strong, be effective, be powerful if you abandon your mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Be careful that you don't become a professional Christian with no mission. This is what I mean by that is you go to church every Sunday and you don't fulfill your purpose. There should be a time in your life that you duplicate yourself. Come on, somebody. That there should be a time in your life that you're in that baptismal with somebody that you led to the Lord that week and you're saying, I just brought a disciple. I just say that we'll have that baptism warm and ready for you every single Sunday. If you lead someone to the Lord, let them know. This Sunday, I'll baptize you. Come on, how many are ready to receive that assignment of God? What a shame that building is shut down. I ran into a church this week in Arizona and we're, we're talking about right now about, about starting a, a way we're allowed to reach in Arizona. It just happened this week. So we're going to have most likely 90 something percent right now. We're going to have the way Arizona coming up pretty soon. There's a pastor that came up to me. I just met him. I just met him this week. He, he wanted to meet me because he heard about our ministry. He goes, I'm looking to pass on this ministry to a church that could take it to the next level. He goes, I heard that you're making disciples. I really don't know how to do that. I need your help. And what we're going to do, I've taken the church as far as I could take it. But what we want to do is give you everything. They have, they have a 32,000 square foot uh, auditorium with three out of four auditoriums it's it's a movie theater beautiful place three and a half acres and what they're saying we want to give it to you just take on pay off some of the debt which is only it's a small amount and we'll give you the property that's worth millions of dollars if you'll just go ahead and, and fulfill this assignment 
And, and I'm telling you right now, we're saying, okay, come on, give us that building. We're ready to go to work and we're ready to make us disciples. When you make a decision to make disciples of Jesus Christ, all the resources of heaven will back you up. Come on, you're not in poverty. You don't lack strength. God will give you everything that you need to fulfill your assignment. Give God some praise. Come on, God's doing something. I'd love to open up that campus over there in Pomona. Come on and make the best days of that church, not yesterday, but make the best days of that church in the future. But God needs some people that are willing to accept the assignment. Is there anybody here willing to accept an assignment? I'm going to give you some facts about the mission of making disciples. Some facts. Fact number one. All disciples of Jesus Christ are commanded to make disciples of Jesus Christ. This is what it's saying, is that this is not like a pastor's job. My, pa my job is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. But I'm never going to ask you to do something I don't do. But I still got an individual responsibility to reach people and make disciples. I'm never going to get to the point that I'm going to tell you to go do it and I'm going to be kicking back just waiting for you to do what, what I'm calling you, what God's calling you to do, and I'm never going to do it. Disciple making is a lifestyle for me. On, on Saturday, while we, were, while we were looking at that building, the real estate broker was there, and the real estate broker was looking at this building with us, showing us the building and, and selling us on this building. And, and what I did was, because I'm a disciple maker, I took the real estate broker, which he has real estate agents that work for him, and I took him to the side. And I began to share the good news of Jesus Christ. His name, is, his, his name is Michael. And by the time we were done speaking, he gave his life to Jesus. So this week, I see Brett gave his life to Jesus. I, we got a real estate, come on, broker just gave his life to Jesus. And most likely next Sunday, Michael's going to be here with his family because he gave his life to Jesus because we're on a mission of making disciples. And when you're on a mission of making disciples, you're going to see God use you. But this assignment of every believer, every disciple of Jesus Christ is commanded to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Disciple making is our responsibility and duty. This is why we're here on earth. There isn't any disciple making in heaven. You can't reach somebody in heaven. That means, well, you have breath in your lungs. Reach as many people as you can. Because once you breathe your last breath, you can't go back and reach people. So what's a disciple? It's a personal follower of Jesus Christ. It's someone who's making a decision. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Are there any followers of Jesus Christ here? What's a disciple? It's a person that has committed to be like Christ in thought, in action, in character. So I, I've committed to follow Christ, but I've also committed to be like Christ in thought, in action, and character. My mission says, so what's your mission? Make disciples. What's your, what's, what do you, who do you want to be like? I want to be like Jesus. He was the ultimate disciple maker. What's a disciple? It's a student. Say it with me, a student. It's one who accepts and assists the spreading of the good news and teachings of Christ. Also, a disciple is one who's enrolled to become a scholar. What that means is that you cannot be a disciple if you're not willing to go to school, if you're not willing to be taught. I'm going to give you an opportunity this week. Enroll. Become a full disciple. Tuesdays at 7 o'clock, we'll be here. We're going to be here making disciples. We're going to be teaching the word of God. Next Sunday at 9 o'clock, we'll be teaching. But this is what your job is. Your assignment is to enroll. You'll never become, come on, you'll never become a strong disciple if you don't make some strong commitments. You guys get that? So I enroll. I'm a student. My goal is to become like Christ. You cannot become like Christ if you don't expose yourself to maximum exposure to Christ's teachings. Follow, following Jesus Christ and making disciples goes hand in hand. So I'm a disciple, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, but making disciples goes hand in hand. Look at Matthew 4, 19, it says this. And he said to them, to his disciples, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walk in the same path of life that I walk, and I will make you fishers of men. What do you say? Follow me as my disciples, and I'll teach you how to make disciples. 
I'll show you how to do that. It's never just follow me. Follow me and I'll show you how to reach others. Follow me and I'll show you how to heal others. Follow me and I'll show you how to set people free. Follow me and I'll show you how to teach people. So it goes, someone say, go, go, it goes hand in hand. Say with me. It's like hamburgers and fries. Right? Make, follow me as a disciple and I'll show you how to reach people. In order to make disciples, we must first become a disciple. Our discipleship system here or process is simple and I want you to know it. The first level of our discipleship system or process is commitment. Say it with me, commitment. And in commitment, the first step is salvation. Then baptism. Then membership. The first level is commitment. It's salvation, then what? Baptism. And the next step is? That's level one. Every one of us can fulfill level one almost today. Get saved. If you're not baptized, we can baptize you next week. Get saved, but you could join the membership class. And all you need one more thing, get baptized, and you fulfill the first level. Level t- one is commitment. Say, say with me, commitment. Level two is discipleship. And this is where the three sets of classes, Holy Warriors 1, which is radical Christian living. Holy Warriors 2, which is total freedom. Holy Warriors 3 is prosperous living. So these three classes are going to equip you and make you strong so you can overcome whatever's stopping you from moving forward. We're going to show you how to be strong in the Lord, overcome the anger, overcome the hate, overcome the addictions, overcome your fears, and become the person that God has created to be. We're going to show you how to have a strong personal walk with God. We're going to teach you how to devote, how to study the Bible. All these things are going to happen in these three classes. And the, le- the last level is leadership. Say with me, leadership. Leadership one is foundational leadership. Becoming, a certi- becoming certified to lead a discipleship group. So we're going to teach you how to become a leader. Le- leadership two is team building and leadership development. I'm going to show you how to build teams and develop leaders. Leadership three is, is leadership university, which is ultimate leadership development. So we have a, we have a process for you. If you want to grow, you can grow today. Complete level one, show up to membership. We're going to have food. I know it's a sacrifice. I know it's not easy, but if you don't put in the time and you don't put it, God in your schedule, if you don't put training in your schedule, this is what's going to happen. It's never going to happen. Okay, so fact number one, all disciples of Jesus Christ are commanded to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Fact number two, disciples are made. Say with me, disciples are made. That means that no one is born a disciple of Jesus Christ. The truth is we're born sinners. How many know that? No one needs to teach a little boy and a little girl to say mine. They learn mine right away. No one even needs to teach you how to lie. You lie. As soon as you get in trouble, you start making up some stuff, right? Or you start covering up. No one has to teach us how to be angry and and, and hit people when they hit you. No one needs to teach you to do that. But we have to teach our little boys and little girls, keep your hands to yourself. But they hit me first. Boom. Some of us right now are still living like two-year-olds. They cuss me out. I cuss them out. They're mean. I'm mean. The idea is we have to learn how to be disciples. So disciples are made. The command implies about making disciples, it implies responsibility. Say it with me, responsibility. It's not, just, it's not just learning, but I got a responsibility. I got a responsibility to pass this on to somebody else. And I just want to make sure that when I stand before God, I made some disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm going to do everything I can. The other day, this is what's really literally happening. As I'm building my house, because I'm remodeling my house, this is what's, what's happening. I'm building the kingdom. The, the owner of, a, of, a, of a, 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 a company that pulls in tile, his name's uh, Mauricio. He showed up at my house. It was probably around 7 o'clock at night around there. And I just came by the house to kind of look at the progress of what's been done on the house. And, and I met Mauricio. He just happened to be there. He's the owner of this, this tile company that puts tile in. And as I'm sitting there, I'm sitting on my porch, and we talk about tile, and I told him he's doing a great job. And then and, and after that, I talked to him about Jesus. 
And Mauricio's here and he tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. And I, at the end of the conversation, I go, Mauricio, would you like to be saved and become a disciple of Jesus Christ right now on this porch? He goes, let's do it. Mauricio gave his life to the Lord on that porch. And he told me, he told me, he goes, Pastor Marco, I'm coming to church, but I just want to get the towel job done first. I got a good idea. Good. But I didn't tell him a good idea. You could come before the towel's done. He goes, no, I just want to make sure I do it before anything. I go, it's okay. But Mauricio, come on, is coming to Jesus Christ. If he's coming, he's coming to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I have a responsibility because disciples are made. You know what that means? I got to follow up on him. I got to, this is what I'm planning to do. I want to have a Bible study over his house. I'm going to have to put Mauricio in my schedule. I got to put bread in my schedule. I love him. It's not like it's a major sacrifice. I love them. I want to help them grow. But I know this. I cannot make disciples if I'm not willing to put in the time to make disciples. How many understand that? You got to sacrifice, lay down your life to transform someone else's life. See, we cannot make disciples if we're not first committed to being disciples. In Matthew 4, 20, it says, immediately they followed they left, immediately they left their nets and followed him, becoming his disciples, believing and trusting in him and following his example. So we're, we're called to make disciples, but this is, a, this is a fact. I cannot make disciples if not, I'm not willing to make a decision and make a commitment to be a disciple. Disciples are made as we walk through life. Say it with me. Disciples are made as we walk through life. That's how disciples are made. Um, the other day, I'm eating, I'm eating lunch with, uh, with some members of the church. And as I'm eating lunch uh, and we're ordering, uh, the, the waitress comes to the table and the waitress comes and she says, can I have your order? Um, would you like some water or some drinks? I go, yes, I'd like some tropical iced tea. And, and they order water and water with lemons. Like, Perfect. So, and then she comes back and she goes, can I, can, can I take your order for in your meal? I go, of course. And I, and I, wanted, I wanted a steak. I wanted a ribeye steak. I want ribeye steak. This, I mean, if I'm going to give an opportunity, I might as well eat right. I want a medium with some cream corn, and I love that. So I ordered that, my ribeye steak with cream corn, and they ordered their, their meals. And, and, and now she's, she's getting ready to go. And, and I said, before you go, I'm going to pray for this meal. And, and what I would love to do is pray for you while we're praying. Is there anything that you need? And tears came to her eyes as she says, I've been doing this for years and no one has ever asked me to pray for me. And she goes, and I deal with a lot of people like you that talk about God, but no one's invited me into the conversation. She said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, with tears in her eyes. And I prayed for that young lady. And while she was walking by, I didn't plan it. She heard me mention her name in a prayer. It's the first time in her life that she's ever heard someone pray for her. She came back to the table and she says, thank you so much. I heard you mention my name. That was the kindest thing anyone has ever done. Just a little prayer. And I, what we're saying is we make disciples while we're building. We make disciples while we're going to school. We make disciples while we're eating. We make disciples while we're walking through the hood. We make disciples. Come on. You make disciples while you're in the hospital. You make disciples while you're doing business. You make disciples of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I, I, I told you guys this. I, I went to... I went to Palm Springs, and, I, and this is all, like, happened recently. And I met a, a man that he, he's living a homosexual lifestyle, and, and he, he, was, he was telling me that. And he told me, he goes, um, he, he works at West Elm, and, and I told you about this. And, and he began to tell me that we can't change. He told me, we just can't change. I'm just made this way. And, and, I, and I told him, I told him my take on it. I told him, I go, look, anyone can change. And, and I say, we're all, we're all born in lust. There's things that we all desire that are different. And no matter what lust that you're dealing with, you can overcome it with Christ. Who could do it? 
By the time that conversation ended, he was so happy I talked to him. I showed him major love. At the end of the conversation, he told me, thank you so much for being so kind and loving and giving me hope. Well, I went back this last two weeks ago. I talked to him probably two months ago. I went there and lo and behold, he ends up being the guy that helps me. I have my mask on and he looks at me. He goes, aren't you the pastor that talked to me two months ago? I go, yeah. He goes, let me tell you something. I just joined a support group and it's a Christian support group. They teach you about the Bible. Don't let nobody know here. He goes, they don't talk about the other thing, but they teach me how to overcome anger, but it's dealing with the other thing too. But he was telling me, when you talk to me, I felt the love of God. I felt the peace of God. I, come on, people want change. People want wholeness and they're not finding it in their lifestyle. Give someone an alternative. So you know what I'm doing? I got his card right now and I'm making a disciple. I'm going to, one of these days, I think I'm going to have a, 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 a Bible study with him and his husband. He's married. Again, we're going to talk about Jesus Christ. They say, Pastor, are you going to be talking about homosexual? I don't need to talk about homosexual. We're all sinners. I'm going to talk about the answer. I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk about eternal life. I'm going to get him saved. How many understand? God will deal with all the rest. Give God some praise. But he knows for sure I love him. I care about him. And I care about him enough to look like a fool. Some of you guys are so interested in looking good, you can't do nothing for Jesus. You're so concerned about being rejected, you can't do nothing. What if I get rejected? Not what a person's lost and they're depressed and they're suicidal and they're dying and their marriage is falling apart and their family's falling apart. They have no sense of direction and headed for hell and you're concerned about looking stupid. Okay. In Matthew 4, 19, it says this. Look at this. Disciples are made as we walk through life. Walking along the beach of Lake Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, later called Peter and Andrew. They were fishing, throwing their nets into the lake. It was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come, come with me and I'll make you a, a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask any questions, but simply dropped their nets and followed them. As Jesus is walking through the beach, he goes, this is disciple making time. I see two people there. They're fishing. He says, hey, bro, follow me. I'll show you how to real fish for reels. I'll teach you how to fulfill your purpose and, and fish people and drag people out of the sea of depression, drag people out of the sea of hell, drag people out of the sea of misery, drag people out of the sea of confusion and rejection and abuse. I'll teach you how to reach people. Give God, come on, isn't this good stuff just as you go? And the fact number three, we'll end it with this. Fact number three. If you don't go and make disciples of Jesus Christ, no one will ever be saved. You know what that means? If they're not saved, they're going to be separated from God forever. If they're not saved, they'll never overcome any of their pain, their hurt. If they're not saved, them and their families will go to hell for eternity. Are you okay with that? If we don't make disciples of Jesus Christ, our church will die. If we don't make disciples of Jesus Christ, our church will end up like that church, be boarded up and roaches living in it. In Matthew, Mark 16, 15, it says this. And then he told them, same thing, go into the world. Go into where? Be careful that you're not so churchy. You can't even associate with worldly people. Don't become so, oh my gosh, they're drinking, they're cussing. Shut up. I don't care if they're cussing and drinking. I'm looking to reach some people that are cussing and drinking, strung out, crazy, violent. How are you going to reach them if you're not willing to go where they're at? Don't be so heavenly minded. You're no earthly good. Get to the point. Don't forget where you came from and go out there and reach some people. Stop trying to judge people and go help some people. 
Go into all the world. Go into what? The world? Oh my gosh, not the world. Not the hood. Oh my gosh, I don't want to associate with those people. They might have cooties. Stop it. And preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. You know, when I talked to Brett, Brett didn't have to accept it. But it was my responsibility at least to share it. But he believed and he got baptized. Come on, someone got, I have to give Brett an opportunity, right? And he goes, okay, let's do this. And he's going to give, come on, someone else an opportunity. His wife is excited. She's sitting right here. He's saying, that's my man. He lives for God. He's a knight in shining armor. And he's going to lead my family. Come on, as a man of God, this is a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we're a family that lives for God. But they needed an opportunity. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. This is simple. You could believe or you not believe. If you believe, you could be saved today. Saved from what? Judgment. The reality is that you're not going to earn your way into heaven because you're a good person. No one here is going to get to heaven because you are so awesome. You're going to get to heaven because God is so merciful. You know what that means is heaven is not for a whole bunch of goody two shoes. It's for a whole bunch of sinners like you and me that know we fall short. Like, ah, man, I need some help. Anybody need some help? Like right now, you all look pretty. But I don't know how you're going to look when you get into traffic today. I don't know how you're going to look when you get in your car today. Why are you taking so long to get those kids out of kids world? What are you trying to do? Join the ministry? Calm down. You forgot everything we taught. Be like Jesus. Kick back. Right? But that's going to be the reality. You're not going to be saved because you're perfect because me and you ain't perfect. We're going to be saved because God's so perfect and his love for you is so perfect and so amazing and so unconditional. Heaven is not a reward for the good things that you do. You receive eternal life one way, by placing your faith in Jesus Christ, the one that paid the full price by being punished for the wrong things you've done. Have you ever done something so wrong that you beat yourself up? Have any of you ever punched yourself in the chest and in the face? Because you regret what you've done. You're like, have you ever done that? I have. Ugh. Some of you guys have cut yourself. Practice cutting. Some of you have practiced self-destruction. Some of you, without even knowing it, you're self-destructive. That means you don't allow yourself to succeed because you don't believe you should. I don't deserve it. And the re reason you're thinking about that is because you're thinking about your failures and thinking about people you hurt and how you hurt yourself and your imperfections. And you start thinking, I don't deserve God. I don't deserve love. I don't deserve to be happy. So you don't allow yourself to experience that. Some of us is conscious and some of us is in your subconscious. You're just doing it. But I got good news for you that you don't get into heaven because you're perfect. You get into heaven when you realize I'm a sinner. And I realize I'm a sinner. And I also realized that because I've sinned, I deserve to be punished. But I know this, that God loved me so much that he sent his perfect son as a man to take my place and be punished for all the wrong I've done so I could be forgiven. Not that there's going to be punishment. The punishment was put on Jesus. All your lies, your anger, the abuse, the betrayal, it was all put on Jesus. The, the, the abuse all that, the hate, the prejudice, was all put on Jesus. And he's bleeding and he's dying. And if you ask him, why are you doing this? He goes, because I love my people. The price must be paid. And if I don't pay this price, they'll go to hell. They'll be lost forever. They'll never be forgiven. And they cannot have a relationship with me. So I'll pay the price so they could be forgiven. I'll pay the price so I could give them love. I'll pay the price so I could give them eternal life. I'll pay the price so I could give them the free gifts of eternal life. That's the message. And if today you're willing to say, Jesus, I want change, I want forgiveness, I want salvation, you could have it right now. You never will fulfill this mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ unless you accept the call to become one first. And how do you come? You come exactly the way you are. You don't fix yourself and come to Jesus, you come the way you are. He's the one that fixes you. 
Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome. Are you excited about making some disciples of Jesus Christ? We could do this. Man, I think this, this place is almost 100% full at 9 o'clock. Good job, guys. I'm proud of you, every, every one of you coming. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to dismiss in just two minutes. But before I dismiss, I want to give everyone an opportunity to say yes to a call. He's picking you. Will you say yes? He's saying, son, daughter, come follow me. And if you follow me, I'll show you how to reach others. I'll show you how to change your world. Come follow me, and I'll forgive you of every one of your sins. Come follow me, and I'll teach you how to be a man, how to be a woman, how to be a mama. Come follow me, and I'll show you how to succeed and overcome. I'll show you. Come follow me, and I'll show you how to have some joy and peace in your life. Come follow me. I'll help you. I love you. Come follow me, and I'll give you eternal life. You'll live forever. Come follow me, and I'll give you abundant life. If you're in this place and you're saying, you know, Pastor, I don't know if I'm really following Jesus, but I want to make a decision today. So it takes real man and woman. Brett said it. Mauricio said it. Michael said it within this last week. This is your opportunity. I want to follow Jesus. I want to make that step. I know it's hard leaving your old life to follow Jesus, but I'll tell you this, just come the way you are. It's okay. God accepts you. Why well, made mistakes? God says, so what? I died for your mistakes. Come on. Receive forgiveness. Receive a new beginning. God's not mad at you. He loves you. He wants to help you. He wants to save you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to set you free. You come with your heroin addiction. You come with those thoughts of hate and anger. Just come the way you are. Come with that sense, man, I feel like I'm a failure. God says you're not. You're not created to be a failure. I love you. I've messed up. Who cares? Everybody's messed up. Come, come. I'm going to count to three. You're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven. But I want to know before I leave here that I'm right with God. And I want a new life. I want a new beginning. When I count to three, you can say yes. I'm not even going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes because I believe this. If you're ashamed of Jesus Christ here on earth, you, I mean, how are you going to live for God out there? If you're ashamed here, God says, I'm not ashamed of you. Don't be ashamed of me. I love you. This is your day. Come on, there's some real men and women out there saying, I got to get changed. I can't change myself. I need Jesus to save me today. When I count to three, or maybe you're a Christian, needs to recommit. Say, man, I got so far away from God. I lost purpose. I lost mission. I feel so empty. Come back home. This is your day. God wants to forgive you. Make it one. When I say three, raise your hands all this build. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Two. And when I say three, raise your hands quickly all over this building. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building saying, that's me. I want to go ahead. Come on. I want to receive Jesus. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see, come on. Anybody else? I want to be disciple. Anybody else over there? Way in the back. I'm so proud of you out there. So proud of you there. So proud of you here. Okay. Anybody else? I see the hand there. I want those to raise their hands. Just come forward real quick. I'm going to pray with you. Give me the privilege of praying with you. What you're saying when you leave your seat and come forward, right up here, we're just going to pray with you. You're saying, I'm leaving my old life and I want to follow Jesus. I'm leaving the depression there. I'm leaving, come on, I'm leaving the fear there. I'm leaving my old life there. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, someone's coming to Jesus. Someone's going to say, someone's coming with their addiction. Someone's coming with their pain. Someone's coming with their failure. Receive forgiveness. New life, new beginnings. Come on, church, let's get excited. New disciples of Jesus Christ. God bless, bro. Come on, let's give a hand for Roman and Russia. Come on, they're giving their lives to Jesus right now. Bro, God bless you. See, Mike, love you, man. Mike's giving his life to Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. Someone has been praying for Mike. This is not the first time he's heard about Jesus because God has been reaching out to him and today is his day of salvation. Come on, he's in. I'm all the way in now. God bless you. What's your name? George is giving his life to the Lord. What's your name? Oscar's, Oscar's giving his life to the Lord. Come on, come on. We got some men and women are giving their lives to the Lord. 
What's your name, baby? Paige is giving her life to the Lord. Her. Shiley. Shiley. is giving her life to the Lord. Come on. Her name's being written in the book of heaven. I love this. Someone at home right now, you're giving your life to the Lord and your name's written. I might have not said it, but God's saying it in heaven. Now let's pray. Now, guys, take the next step. If you, if you want to become a member of the Way World Outreach, don't become a casual member. Become an active member. Take the next step. Well, I don't need to go to that. No, no, take the next step. Be, lead yourself to the class. Lead yourself to Tuesday nights. Change your life. Take action. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes to everyone that's here. I just want you to repeat after. We're going to help you with a little prayer. God hears your prayer. Most of all, you're giving your heart. The power is not in the words that we're saying now. Like these words have to be perfect. It's just the idea that you're here and you're taking action. And you're saying, save me, Lord. God sees your heart. He loves you so much. He's so proud of you. But repeat after him. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Save me. Forgive me. Set me free. Make me new. I, I believe that you died. You were, you, you were punished. You suffered to pay the price for all the wrong I've done. It should have been me. But you loved me so much. You took my place. Save me. Forgive me. Make me a new person. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I commit to be a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. And devil, let go of my mind. Let go of my family. Let go of my life. Jesus is now my Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, if you're right here, we're going to pray with you. Sign up for the next step. Sign up for the next step. God bless you, church. This Wednesday, next Sunday. Rick Pino is going to be here. Top worship leader in the country. He's going to be here next Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Wednesday night service. You don't want to miss that. We're going to have a dynamic word. Tuesday night, Holy Wars 1 and 2. Next Sunday, Holy Wars 1. Get ready. We love you. You need prayer coming up. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you.